Good morning, Oathbreakers, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb. Today, I have a featured deck where we have a team-up between a woman who had to die three times to be a Planeswalker and one of the most evil Planeswalkers ever to be tricked by Urza. Let's get into it. Today's deck is a deck that comes from us from JNTS Oathbreaker off of Moxfield. He's given me the permission to go ahead and show off his deck, and I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I just wanted to make sure he gets credit for this monstrosity he has built. So, here we go. First up, we are running a Partners Commander deck. We have two Partners Commanders. Jessica Thrice Reborn, and Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. Jessica comes into play with a number of loyalty counters onto her each time you've cast a commander from your command zone, so it is important to be okay with recasting these commanders. Her minus zero ability is you choose target creature until your next turn. Uh, when that creature would deal combat damage to one of your opponents, it deals three times that damage instead. Minus Xer, she does X damage up to three targets. So neither of these abilities, the first ability is always going to be good, especially if we have creatures we know that can get through and are unblockable. The second ability is only good if we can find a way to increase her loyalty, but it's not built in. Her partner, Tevish Zot, nope. Always a little trial here. Her partner, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools, will plus two to create two thralls. Plus one, we can sacrifice creature planeswalker, draw two cards. If what we sacrificed was a permanent, um, we get to draw an additional card, which isn't bad. And it's minus 10 is to just take all commanders from all command zones and play and put them on the battlefield under your control. That last ability is a game-winning condition, so he's kind of the backup win condition in this deck. Let's real quick get into our signature spells, and I think it'll give away what this deck really wants to do and its purpose. So for Tevish Zot, his signature spell is Damnable Pack. For X and 2 Black, it's going to let us draw X cards and lose two. Uh, sorry, X life. This is a really important setup card to the deck to making sure we have a full hand. So for when we do what we want to do, we're going to be able to have just a huge turn. Jessica's signature spell is Jessica's Will. This is a pretty well-known card, but in case you haven't heard of it, what it does is if you control a commander when you cast it, you get to do both of these items. Otherwise, you'd only get to choose one. You get to create a number of red cards equal, ah, uh, sorry, you get to draw a number of red cards equal to an, let's try this one more time, but with feeling. You get to add red mana for each card in an opponent's hand, and then you exile the top three cards of your library, and you may play them this turn. So that previous Tevisot card, we can use to actually fill up an opponent's hand, drain them life, and then when we play Jessica's Will, we can generate way more mana. So there's a little bit of a backup combo there. Now, Jessica's Will is very well known as a storm combo piece, which is why I'm not surprised at all to see the Buried God of Storytelling made this list. On her front side, she says whenever we cast a spell, we add a red mana until end of turn. We don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So every spell we play gives us mana to play the next spell, which is fairly common of these types of decks. On the back side is Harfell's Horn of Bounty for four and a red. We probably won't use this side often, but it allows us to discard a card to exile the top two cards of our library and we may play them this turn. So if we do start to run out of gas or steam or the cards in our hand are too high to play to keep the, the combo going, basically, we can start discarding dead cards to get two more draws. I'd also like to remind people that um, as long as we're making mana, the other side, the Bergy side, we can use that additional mana to keep casting uh, Jessica's Will in order to keep the uh, ball rolling on our Storm nonsense. Next, we have Blood Pet. It's a one black cost creature that can be sacrificed for one black mana. It's really just in here to provide that clutch mana to keep us going. 
my interface doesn't want to work with me. Cathodian works very similarly. When it dies, it gets us three black mana, or sorry, three colorless mana or generic mana. Mana for Descender, if we put one colorless mana into it, we can generate a black or red mana. This color fixing will actually help us get across that line. We can't depend on this fully. We can only use this three times a turn. Mirror Moon Vessel, when it dies, we add a generic mana. Priest of Gix, when it dies, we, uh, or no, when it enters the battlefields, this is a good setup piece for Storm because we are paying three, then we're getting refunded that free mana, and we are getting a plus one Storm count. So, Priest of Umbrask works exactly the same at the same cost, but in red. Prosper the Tomebound, um, Beginning of our end step, we exile a card under them until the end of our next turn, we may play that card. Whenever we play a card from exile, we create a treasure token. Jessica's will notably puts cards in exile for us to play, and the horn on the back of Bergy does the same. So this also is another one of those where every time we play a spell, we're going to be able to recoup the cost of that spell to play the next spell. Runaway Steamkin, whenever we cast a red spell, we put a 1-1 counter on them. Once it has three 1-1 counters, we can remove them for three red mana. So again, there's a pattern here. <laughs> Seeming the Spirit Guide can be discarded from our hand or, I guess, exiled from the game to generate a red mana. Uh, Treacherous Orc, once it's in play, we don't really care about the dethrone. What we care about is being able to spend our life to generate as much mana as we need to keep rolling. Internal Plunge, when it enters the battlefield, we sacrifice a creature and add three red mana. This is important for sacrificing Cathodian or any of the other creatures that are just going to sit on the battlefield and we can't get the mana out of them unless we, you know, have them go to the graveyard. Mana Schism, probably mispronounced that, says sacrifice any number of lands, add that much mana. This is one we want to play as a last resort, but it is to get us over the line and win. Mizzix Mastery lets us X card, uh, exile target instance or sorcery from our graveyard. For each card exile, this way we copy it, and we may cast the copy without paying its mana cost to exile Mizzix Mastery. If we overload it, we do the exact same thing, but we replace target with each, so it will hit every <laughs> instant sorcery um, in our graveyard and allow us to recast them essentially for free, giving us a huge storm count, but also just massive amount of nonsense in a lot of cases. Uh, Past in flame says each instant sorcerer card in your graveyard has flashback and the flashback cost is equal to its original mana cost, which is fun is the shortest way I can put that. It also has flashback. So I would say play it at your own peril, but it's generally a really good card for a deck like this. Pirate's Pillage, as additional cost to cast a spell, we discard a card, we draw two cards, and we create two treasure tokens. Again, it's a card that's going to refill our hand so we can keep our storm count going, and it's going to recoup us some of its mana cost for the next spell. Rite of Flame, we add two red mana to our mana pool, and an additional red for each one of these in our graveyard. We're never really going to get that additional mana. Seize the Spoils, when we cast a spell, we discard a card, we draw two cards and create a treasure token. Strike it rich, we create a treasure token. End of story, one red mana, one on our storm count, one new mana to cast the next spell. And it has flashback for two and a red, but we probably won't use that flashback cost. We'd rather use like the other spell that gives flashback to a spell because then it'll be flashbackable for one red again. So just a thought. Burnt Offering lets us sacrifice a creature to it. We create X mana in any combination of black or red, where X is the sacrifice creature's mana value. So this is an old card. I did have to read the Urda there because uh, you don't see them like this nowadays. Cabal Ritual, we can add three black mana for one and a black, or we can add five black mana if there are seven or more cards in our graveyard. Since we are going to be playing quite a few cards from Exile, and we're going to be exiling cards from our graveyard on Flashback and whatnot, we might not always get to play that th uh, threshold, but it will be sweet when we do. Calling the Weak will give us four black mana when we pay one black and sacrifice a creature. Reign of Filth uh, lets all of our lands be sacrificed for black mana till end of turn. 
sacrifice let's just sacrifice a creature for one black mana and then add a black mana equal to the sacrifice creature's mana value seething song it lets us add five red mana for the cost of uh, two and a red mana so pretty good right there song of the damned for one black mana we add one black mana to our mana pool for each creature card in our graveyard unexpected windfall for two and two red when we play it we discard a card we draw two cards and create two treasure tokens Aether Flux Reservoir, which is one of our big win conditions, costs four and says whenever you cast a spell, gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. So we're going to want to play a lot of those draw cards in order to find this. This is probably one of the most important cards to actually find in the deck to then do our badness, as it were. If we can pay 50 life, we'll do 50 damage to any target. So if we look at the storm scale, we you know play a spell hopefully draw some cards generate some mana play another spell uh, so the first spell will get us one life the second spell will get us two so that's a total of three the third spell will get us three life so now we're up to six the fourth spell will get us four life that's that's actually 10 life we've gained in that turn because you you're always going up so it's important to remember that because it does compound really fast and getting to 50 life is not as hard as some people might think Arcane Signet is just here to help us fix our mana, and it's a good card. Uh, Lotus Petal. Uh, I like it in this deck, but I wouldn't run it in a lot of decks. It's zero mana. For one mana, you can use at any time instant speed, but since you can't find one for less than 24, like 99, I would say this is one of those you think about proxying if you do want to try out the deck. This isn't really a budget deck, as you'll notice in some of these other cards, just for the fixing part of it and making sure the deck runs correctly as a combo deck every game. So we have Phyrexian Altar. It lets us sacrifice a creature to add one mana of any value. Again, most of our creatures are only here to further our goal and plot of storming off. Rakdo Signet, just another ramp card. Talisman of Indulgence. Underworld Breach uh, gives our cards escape and the escape cost is equal to the mana cost plus exiling three cards from our graveyard again this is just kind of a more limited flashback we only do get to use it for the turn we cast it really because at the beginning of the next end step we have to sacrifice it so it's just really just another way to try to get across the line and make sure we can cast as many spells as we need to blood crypt oh i guess we're in the mana base now so we've got blood crypt which is one of our shock lands uh, Cabal Coffers, which is probably one of the most powerful black mana producers in the game. Dragon Skull Summit. Graven Carns. Uh, Mountain. So we probably have a bunch of those. Shadow Blood Ridge. Sulfur Springs. Swamp. And I believe Tainted Peaks is the last land. Yep, and we're back around. So that's a look at the deck. So you can totally pull off a Storm deck in Oathbreaker. The thing to be mindful of with a deck of this type is that a deck built for this purpose to do what it is trying to do is probably going to laser cannon one player out of the game if you do not have a good enough turn. So it can non-bow and do something amazing, but you really kind of want to play it safe and be a little quiet and look non-threatening for as long as you can um, if you want to actually storm out because you know you could probably guarantee the removal of one player. If you can get the game down to the point where it's just you and one other person, mostly through politics and just kind of smart play, that is going to be your best bet to win with a deck like this because it's very hard for a deck like this to take out multiple players without all of the luck being on your side now to be fair and non-partial jessica's will the signature spell that we've paired with jessica here does make this way more possible it is one of the best cards that i am surprised has not been banned in the format so something to keep in mind Having said all that, um, thank you guys for joining me. Below me on the screen is uh, my patrons. And then uh, up here in the corner, nope, these are my patrons, sorry. I can point to the right side of the screen. Below me is my YouTube subscribers. If you wanna get on this list, please subscribe to the channel. I try to update this as frequently as possible. I'll put another video, oh, 
<laughs> put another video up here you guys should check out probably another deck tech just so that you can just see what Oathbreaker is about we will have a gameplay video tonight I hope you have a great rest of your day thank you for dropping in